Yeah, it's on that email. It's just lower down in the email. Is it Hilly? Can you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so for this conversation, you designed the course, which is kind of a unique situation since I will be racing in Edmonton. And to have like a close family member so involved with the race, I feel like is a bit of an advantage. So what would be cool is if you could walk me through the course a little bit and talk about how you designed it. Edmonton's kind of unique because it has the river valley. So personally, I think that's exciting because you climb in and out of it and it makes for a super hilly course, which is a lot different than a lot of other flat PTO races that we've done. From, from, a, from a broadcast perspective, the, the goal was to try to showcase Edmonton. We want people to see Edmonton and recognize that it's a beautiful place to come and visit. So in order to do that, we were trying to get the race course, the bike course specifically, to go into the downtown core as much as possible. Um, so we created a sort of an ideal situation, what we would, what we wanted to do on the bike course. And then we have to work with the city to put together something that actually works in the middle of a busy city uh, on a weekend. The Harlock Park, where we, where the venue is, is in the park and it's in the river valley. So anytime we leave the park to head out onto the bike course, there's always going to be hills. So that is sort of built into um, that challenge and that, that uh, course feature is gonna be built into any course that we make any time. So when I was younger, I watched the World Cup in Edmonton at Horlack Park in the same venue. Yeah. How similar is the course to the old World Cup that we used to watch? Is it obviously has to be longer than an Olympic distance. So is it multiple loops or is it one giant loop? All the races that we've done in the past have been the shorter distances and the reason that we didn't cross the bridge for those is because we wanted to have lots of loops through the park for the spectators. Because uh, the PTO event has the longer bike route, we have a longer, we have a bigger loop. So that way we can go to the other side of the river and we can use um, Groat on the other side. Um, it's, it's a really nice piece of road for an event organizer because Groat Road winds through uh, the river valley, so it doesn't have any cross streets. So for us, as a manage, for managing it, it's a really easy piece of the course to manage. And pretty much every hill that gets out of the river valley is pretty steep, aside from Groat Road, which is a more mellow one. But to climb up to the legislature, you are going up a steep hill. So that is going to be interesting for the age group athletes in their bike selection and their gear selection of what what to use because it's like actually quite a lot of elevation gain if you factor in all the loops. How many loops is it? How many, um, is it the exact same for the pros and the age group athletes? Like are we doing the exact same course? All the courses are exactly the same. The 25 kilometer age group race will do a short lap in the water. They'll do ex exactly the same bike course but only one loop and then they'll do one loop of the run course and 100k athletes, pros and age groupers will do three laps of the swim. They will do four laps of the bike and they will do four laps of the run course. The pond where the race is happening is really a pond. It's not like a lake where people go and swim and use boats and do outdoor water activities usually. But for this race every year, they chlorinate it, they clean it so that it is a really safe body of water to do a race in. Is it a beach start? Is it a pontoon start? For age group athletes, are they gonna be like running in one at a time? Are they lining up on this dock? So for the 25 kilometer event for age groupers, um, that will be a mass start. The 100 kilometer event is going to be a time trial start. So one at a time um, in your age groups, one at a time leading into the water. Um, when we first built this swim start, um, it was very steep. Over time, the sand has landed and, and sort of made that slope a bit more gentle. So you can have a bit more natural step into the water and a little bit of a dive. In between laps, are you running out of the water onto the beach and back in? Yes. The athletes come out of the water, run around the iconic tree. It's sitting there. It's, it's getting bigger every year. And we, it, it's a nice opportunity for, for broadcast to see where the athletes are in, you know, in order because it's often hard to see in the water. When we do the run course, it stays in the river valley, this one. We leave the transition area and, and follow the ring road around Horlack Park until we get over to the bridge, 
cross the bridge. We go a little bit into the off-leash dog park, so you might see some friends on the other side. <laughs> and then you just turn around and come back. Although it's not interesting, sort of, there's not a lot of elevation change, it is nice because you get to go across the bridge. If it's a hot day, you'll get a nice breeze off the river. So is there any part in the course where you're overlapping and you can see your competitors coming the opposite direction? That's on the bridge. It's out and yeah, well, the whole thing is out and back. You're beside the, yeah, it's out and back. There's no yeah. loop aspect. No. no. Okay. Well, that's interesting because it does, it does change the dynamic when you can see the people you're racing and how big the gaps are for sure. Yes. What advice would you give to an age grouper before tackling this course? Keep in mind that it's so hilly and going up hills really hard can zap your legs pretty hard. So especially for the 100k distance, I would say moderating your effort and your power going up so that you can still push power coming down because the hills like on Burr Road are not so steep that you can coast. You're still going to have to push power. Right. So I would say just as you're heading out, keep an eye on your power while you're fresh and feeling good and don't attack all the climbs on the first loop. Just, you know, realize there's a lot of loops to go and the elevation gain is pretty significant. Is it a 20 meter draft zone for the pros? Yes, 20 meter draft zone for pros and for age groupers, I believe. Oh, wow. Um, and so when that's another consideration when we're making the course, you want to make it long enough so that you can actually have a decent capacity on the course without people ha not not being able to keep that draft zone. Yeah, right. Because that's a big so, problem in a lot of age group races is just too much. There's not enough room to spread out. So I think that there will be lots of room on this course to be very, very cautious on, on that 20 meter draft zone for the age groupers. There's going to be lots of room, I think. Yeah, which I think is an, an attraction for people that are mostly doing Ironman races and there's just like a thousand people in there. Yeah. Someone who's stronger on the bike can't necessarily use the bike to their advantage because they're just weaving the whole time around people. So yeah. having a bit of a bigger course with the TT start and fewer people is an att appeal to someone who's strong on the bike. How has Edmonton created this culture for triathlon? People are often surprised when they hear Edmonton as being a triathlon hub, sort of, in the country. We, we developed a really good relationship with the city and they support us really well. And the other thing is our volunteers are amazing. Like we have volunteers who have been here since 1999 and they're still on my competition team. That expertise out on the course is really unmatched around the world, I think. And so when people do come here, they get a really nice experience. They really get a nice feeling of, it's a great place to be. It's a great place. We care about the athletes. They feel like they're well looked after here. Do you have any predictions of where I might finish in the race? Well, I'm hoping number one. Yeah, me too. But I don't I haven't looked at the start list because even though I'm course manager and competition manager, I'm still your mother and I, there's nothing I can do except, you know, just be in the, I'm going to be in the command center and I, I probably won't even be able to watch. Yeah, you usually really never watch my races. You just wait till I'm done. So this one's different because yeah. you have to be watching. <laughs> this is the first time it's ever been held on this course. There's not really a standard of like what a fast time is for men and women. But I would say for an 80K, under two hours is going to be fast with the amount of elevation there is on this. Um, it's really hard for me to predict like what Lionel Sanders will ride on this course. Right. But I yeah. predict he'll be very good at it. <laughs>